Along with Update 2.2 came Regiment of Renown Pack 3, bringing a new single entity monster to each of the Warhammer 3 base game factions. So let's look at them and see what they're good for. Starting off with Cathay, we see the Jolly Green Giant, the Green Guardian. Pretty much the same deal as the normal version, just slightly better stats and two unique traits. Number one, a 25% missile resistance and more interestingly, the redirecting aura. This does the same thing as the Cathayan spell Missile Mirror, reflecting missiles back at the shooter, but in an aura, so any unit caught in this aura will have this effect, and as you can see, simply standing near these units will cause them to kill themselves, basically. You don't even need to attack them. It's pretty funny to watch, and it's something really different. You can see this aura is pretty big, so you're going to use this unit to kind of harass enemy backlines and get after their missile units and make them do this to themselves because the AI doesn't have the good sense to stop firing. So yeah, it's pretty different. It's a single entity monster that doesn't actually need to attack anything, even though it is a big strong monster. It's going to get lots of damage done without actually doing the damage itself. So overall, a pretty fun addition for Cathay. Next for Kislev, the Frozen Heart of Winter, a big old elemental bear, this one with a Bound Heart of Winter spell, and of course, some slightly improved stats. A very nice looking model as well, nice color scheme on this one. Pretty much the same deal as it was before, of course, still got the breath attack that you can use, but if you can aim this big boy into a crowd of infantry and get them all gathered around it, nice and tight, you can drop that Heart of Winter spell and do a lot of AoE direct damage over time. So it's kind of like turning the bear into a Mortis engine, but only once for a short time. It's one time use and a 30 second duration, but that's still plenty of time to get a lot of damage done if you can get a lot of units crowded around you, especially expensive ones. The spell is locked onto the bear as well. You can't freely place it anywhere. So wherever the bear goes, the AoE will follow it. So as I say, basically a Mortis engine for about 30 seconds. By the time the spell's finished in this situation, the bear's got about 800 value from mashing up all these swordsmen. Pretty nice, but honestly, you might just be better off bringing a normal elemental bear and just a caster with Heart of Winter. It's not really bringing anything new to the Kislev army, just combining two things that already exist. So you're basically spending money to cast a Heart of Winter spell rather than magic. Next, onto the red boy with Korn's Bloody Fist, a regiment of renowned Bloodthirster, obviously, some slightly improved stats, and a damage resistance when he is nearby an enemy large unit. Overall, honestly, this is probably the least exciting monster of the bunch. It doesn't really do anything differently, it's just slightly tougher when it fights large stuff. As an example, you can see here, it's fighting infantry. It's not getting any kind of buff, but when this cavalry comes over, we'll see the little gore shell buff pop on. There it is. And now we have 10% extra damage resistance while this large unit is nearby. So the unit is still basically the same. You use it exactly the same as the normal version. Nothing really flashy about it. It's just slightly better at the job of fighting large stuff. As an anti-large monster, it's very practical. It makes a lot of sense. It helps it do its job better, especially the job of taking on other single large entities one on one. It can now do that job a little more effectively. It's just not as cool as standing there doing absolutely nothing and reflecting all the missiles back at the enemy's own face. So not really bringing anything new to the Corn army. They already had pretty good anti-large. Now they've just got one extra tough anti-large. Next, let's see what Papa Nergi's bringing to the table. Well, it's Unky for Uncle or Uncle for Uncle or Uncle Furnicle. I don't know how to pronounce it, but that's his name. A great unclean one with some stat buffs, one new ability and a different spell. The ability is called Defiling Deluge, which will turn him into a direct damage Mortis Engine style dude, damaging all enemy units around him. As you can see, these great swords taking that direct damage, and at the same time, will heal Unky Furnicle himself. It only lasts a short duration though, but you do get two counts of it. So you basically just charge him into a crowd, drop this spell, and let him do all the direct damage possible while keeping himself healed up as well. Not the best idea to use it when he's on full health, like I foolishly have here. He also comes with two bound spells, one of them at Stream of Corruption, as the normal Great Unclean one has, and instead of Miasma of Pestilence, he has Spirit Leech instead, so you can rip the health of the enemy lords and such. So a pretty nice little monster, throw him into a crowd, drop that defiling deluge, use his spells, and you've got yourself a nice, slightly more damage dealy, great unclean one. Nothing that the Nurgle army desperately needed, and his ability is kind of a combination of what Festus can do, acting like a Mortis engine and acting like a healer, but only to himself instead. So he's half great unclean one, half Festus, and all bastard. For the Ogre Kingdoms, they've got a new stone horn in the Snowhorn of Morn. 
He's got the improved stats and a couple of abilities. Firstly, who comes with Frostbite, reducing the speed of any enemies he attacks, and an active ability that will increase his armor and missile resistance, but at the expense of speed. So you want to rush him into combat as quickly as possible at full speed before he gets shot. And then once he gets to combat, you can pop that ability, make him tougher, and he'll go to work. So you could use it when he first starts getting shot at to protect him from the missiles, but then he'll be slower, so he'll spend more time in front of the missiles. So to me, it seems running up and taking a few missiles and then getting into some infantry, taking a few shots, tanking the shots, you've got the extra armor and the missile defense. And then when it runs out, you could then perhaps go after the missiles and harass them so they can't shoot you so much anymore. And then when the spell cools down, which is only a minute, so not too long to wait, then you could attack some other infantry and he can mix around between his targets, depending on who's the most dangerous. A nice extra stone horn for the ogres, but not really filling any holes that they might have. Although maybe bringing the speed reduction might be useful if there's a unit you really want to kill, you can stop it from getting away so easy. Next to Slanesh and the Marquis of Masochism. And now before anybody tries to correct me and say it's Marquis or Marquois, I googled it, it comes back Marquis, alright, shut up. This is a regiment of renown Keeper of Secrets, of course. He comes with a few bits and bobs, improved stats obviously, but also enfeebling foe to be used on any kind of foe to bring down their melee defense and melee attack. And he has Phantasmagoria to bring leadership down by 16 and pin the enemies in the aura in place. So a different spell from the Slanesh Law than the normal Keeper of Secrets and the Shadow spell with Enfeebling Foe. And the Phantasmagoria spell works perfectly, bringing down the leadership for his other ability called Feasting on Fear, a passive that will regenerate his health based on the number of wavering units around him. So as you can see here, there's some units wavering, so he is starting to get some regeneration, improving his health over time. So like I say, Phantasmagoria works perfectly with this ability because it'll allow you to bring down enemy leadership to push them into wavering and that will start to heal him. Otherwise, you just want to run him around and look for all those low leadership units so that you can push them into wavering and get a little bit of health regen. So he's one that's probably going to want to move around a lot to find all those weak units. So nothing terribly new for the Slanesh roster here either, just a combination of already existing things as most of these units are but should be a slightly tougher, perhaps slightly more dangerous Keeper of Secrets. And lastly, to the bird people of Zinch with the Lord of Change Regiment of Renown, the Golden Griffin of Theogy. This unit is basically what would be created if Balthazar Gelt got sexy with a Lord of Change. He's got some stat improvements, but is overall still your regular old Lord of Change, but with much more armor. He has a permanent glittering robe, basically look at those shiny golden wings and has two different bound spells. You've guessed it from the Law of Metal. The first one, Gianna's Golden Hounds, the little vortex spell that moves around randomly that flies little golden dogs around, that one, and Searing Doom that rains down metallic shards from the heavens. So two pretty nice spells to get, both of course good for doing damage. You've got the slightly tougher Birdman with the extra glittering robe armor. So a nice little addition, but not really filling any holes that Zinch had, because well, he doesn't really have too many, I guess. So there we go, new regiments of renown in pack 3. A couple of nice additions here, especially for Cathay and Zinch. I think those are my favorite two personally. Nothing really massively game changing for any faction though, but just some extra fun to have in the rosters. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the future.